So, how's everybody doing? Amen. By the grace enjoy, of God. enjoy your time with the Lord, being in his presence, praying and fasting. Yes. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on yes. the move now. We can't stop us now. So, uh, Amen. tomorrow is uh, it's, uh, until 6 p.m. Amen. Just adding a little. Little, little oh okay so, <laughs> home you know, too. friday yeah. and then uh hey you're um free uh wow. on the weekend praise god praise mm -hmm. god all right so talk a little bit about fasting and praying today uh as it's found in second chronicles chapter 20 so if you have your swords let's turn there uh, also, I heard from uh, Sister Mary today, and she said uh, Mandel is doing, he's doing better oh, cool. for his restoration and his, uh, his total healing. And she's coming along as well. Uh, it's interesting. She said, um, <laughs> doctor gave a prescription for medicine on Friday or something, and then Monday she went to another doctor, and they told her, don't take it. And so, <laughs> but by that time, she spent hundreds of dollars for medicine. Oh, um, no. You know, they need to be held accountable. I mean, they, they ought to reimburse her or something. They ought to. I, I, You're so right. They have this yeah. autonomy, you know, that um, they do what they want to do. And uh, not what they want to do, but, you know, they have rules that they play by that we can't play by, you know. And uh, I said, well, you know, uh, who has hundreds of dollars to, to, to give away like that. And yeah. so, uh, you know, pray that, you know, she get the right medication and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, she doesn't have to, you know, keep coming out of her pocket with hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Many of us <laughs> know about this uh, chapter or parts of it, but I um, just want to, um, you know, talk about, you know, the, the you know, um, what chapter was that again? Second Chronicles chapter 20. 20, you know, okay. Power, Thank you. you know, the power okay. of, of praise, power of prayer and fasting. And I believe that fasting really sets the tone uh, for all that that transpires uh, in this in this narrative that you know, fasting really sets the tone. Uh, 20 verse one, it happened after this that the people of Moab with, with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazon, Tamar, which is En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. All right, so we have this situation where a great multitude is coming up against Jehoshaphat and the people of God. And the Bible says that, that he feared. And, and in one sense, you know, there was, um, uh, uh, you know, they should, the fear was because of the great multitude. But in, in another sense, you know, fear, uh, could also uh, point to the fact that he feared God, and that there was a reverence for God, and that he uh, that, that that he needed to uh, lean on the Lord and not the arm of flesh. And so he feared, and what he did was he set himself to seek the Lord. He set himself to seek the Lord. Now, here the word "seek," uh, the basic sense is is that of worship. Uh, but also it means also to, to, discover, to discover God's will. And so what he wanted to do was to, dis to discover God's will in this situation. And I think, you know, that something that we all, to, we all should, you know, desire is to discover what, God, what God's will is in every circumstance, every situation, every challenge that we find ourselves to be in. So he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast. So he proclaimed a fast. In other words, he was saying in essence that 
or he was demonstrating uh, his humility and his total dependency upon God. He understood that he couldn't, you know, he could not do this in his own strength, his own might. And so he proclaimed the fast. And so we talked about, you know, fasting and how that, and, 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 and one of the dynamics is that, you know, we're depending on God. We're trusting God to, to strengthen us, to keep us, amen, and to supply all that we need during this time. And it shows God that, you know, we, we, we need him. We rely totally upon him. So he, he, he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And um, and verse four, so Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord, to ask help from the Lord. So that, that, that um, uh, to pray, to fast and to pray, okay, to ask help of the Lord. Fasting and praying together uh, produces supernatural power, all right? Fasting and prayer together produces spiritual power, produces supernatural power. You know that when uh, disciples of Jesus could not uh, catch a demon out, Jesus said, the last thing he said to them, this kind comes about by prayer and fasting. So they ought to be linked together. They ought to be joined together. And so in our times of fasting, we make sure that we're praying. And I believe without a shadow of doubt that um, uh, it will produce uh, produce supernatural power and we'll see <clears throat> spiritual power being manifested in our lives. So so they set, he set himself to seek the Lord, call all Judah together. Now, in order to get extraordinary help, we must seek it in an extraordinary way, right? And so that's what they do. That's what they did. They called, he proclaimed the fast, and then they got together to ask help of the Lord. They knew where their help was coming from. They knew where their help was coming from. Uh, they didn't, they, they weren't putting their confidence in their own flesh and their own ingenuity and in, in, in their own ability to, to, to war, wage warfare, amen. But they asked help of the Lord. The Bible says that we ought to, you know, um, so so in order to see a manifestation of the spiritual power, they had to seek it. It was uh, incumbent upon them to seek it. All right. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seeking you shall find and knock on the door shall be open. You have to seek it. You have to go for it. Faith without works is dead. The Bible teaches us we have not because we ask not. And so in order to get extraordinary help, you must seek it in an extraordinary way. All right. And so um, and so verse 5 to 12, you know, outlines a prayer that that Jehoshaphat, you know, um, uh, uh, that he prays. Verse 7, then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem. A good leader will not put spiritual demands on those uh, uh, he or she is leading without first putting them on themselves and without first demonstrating um, demonstrating it themselves. Okay. So uh, Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly. Okay, he led he led the prayer. And um, uh, and this prayer is really broken down. Well, there's four dynamics that I that I begin to see in this prayer. Number one, uh, it says, um, in verse okay, let's read, uh, verse six, and said, "O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven?" Okay, are you not God in heaven? He recognizes God's power over heaven. Secondly, he says, and do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hands is there not power and might to do that no one is able to withstand you. And so secondly, he says, do you not rule? He recognizes that God's God has power over all the kingdoms and nations, all right? And the third thing is, uh, verse seven, 
Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? All right. And so, um, are you not our God? Uh, he recognized he recognized God's God's great works in the past on behalf of His people. So the logic here is very clear. If He did it, if He did great things in the past, we can call on Him now. Yeah. Right? For He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. All right. And then He goes on to say, uh, and they dwelt, and they dwelt, and have built and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, and famine, we will stand before this temple in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear, look at this, look at this, you will hear, and you will save, amen. amen. You will hear, and you will save. So the fourth dynamic is that, he said, we stand in this temple and in your presence. And so he stood on the very ground of previous prayer and prior answers to prayer. A hundred years, a century before, you know, when Solomon um, built, the, uh, built the temple, you know, he, he prayed this prayer. You know, the, the place where God said, I'll place my name. And if, if, you, if you call on my name, you know, God said, I will answer you and I will deliver you. And so there's some history that Jehoshaphat understood, and um, uh, and, he, and, he, and he stands on that, all right? So, um, uh, E.M. E. M. Bounds, you know, he said something about prayer uh, that I um, uh, remembered a while ago. He says this, in the fearful contest between God and the devil, between good and evil, between heaven and hell, prayer, is the mighty force for overcoming Satan, giving dominion over sin, and defeating hell. Praying leaders are to be counted in this dreadful conflict. Okay. So, so we need to make sure that uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna be leading God's people, then it's 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 necessary that you be a person given to prayer. All right. Uh, you need, to, you need to give yourself to prayer. Leaders should be those who lead, who lead in prayer, who take the forefront in prayer, uh, who, whose prayer life is visible, is, man, is manifest, is tangible, right? Um, we don't need leaders uh, leading people that have no prayer life because with no prayer life, you know, there's, no, there's no power, all right? Without intimacy with God, there's no relationship. Uh, there's a revelation, you know, uh, they need to be on the vanguard. They should be the ones that should be leading by example, okay? Not telling people to pray, but praying, praying before them that tells them how important prayer is to, to themselves and to, and to the ministry. So Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly, all right? And he led the people in prayer. All right, and so um, uh, let's go on. Uh, verse 10, and now here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let evade, let Israel evade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of, look at this, your possession, which you have given to us to inherit. The promised land was given to them. It was God's possession. Amen. Not only that, but uh, God would not allow Israel to destroy uh, uh, these people. And so, so they're saying, look, Lord, we were, we were obedient unto you. And so we don't think that you're going to judge us now for obedience. We did what you said to do. We spared them. And now here they are rewarding us <laughs> uh, with this with this evil, all right? And so uh, so he says here, oh, verse twelve, oh our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, 
but her eyes are upon you. That's a powerful statement. Any, any of us been at, at an impasse? Any, any of us been at a place where we really did not know what to do? And sometimes, yeah. you know, um, they were we had viable choices, but yet, you know, uh, we still didn't know what to do. But but what he said, but our eyes are upon you. And so, look, he said, that's just saying, look, you're going to do something, God. I know you're going to do something. We don't know how you're going to do it. We don't know when you're going to do it. We, we, you know, we don't know the circumstances around it, but we're going to look to you because we recognize that our help and the answer will come solely from you. If we get victory, if we if we get breakthrough, if we, you know, if we get delivered, you know, if if this battle is won, it's going to be because of you. So therefore, we're going to keep our eyes on you. We're going to watch how we're going to watch and see what you do, how you do it. We're going to we're going to keep our eyes looking unto you in faith, believing you. We, we've come to resolve. We come to resolve that you are our only hope, that you are our only way. No one else can get us out of this. Only you. So therefore, our resolve is we're going to keep our eyes on you. You know, the writer of Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finish of our faith, keeping our eyes upon you. Powerful in, in the sense that, you know, they confess they did not know what to do. But one thing they were going to do, they were going to keep their eyes on Jesus. I, I, I declare, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, He'll, he'll show you how to get out of it. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, he will, he will, he will come through. He will answer you. You know, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, it's it's also they're proclaiming their faith and their trust in him. You know, our eyes will be on no one, no thing, nothing else. We're gonna keep our eyes fixed and focused on you because the bottom line is if victory comes, it has to come through you. And so, verse 13, now all Judah with the little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord. Oh, wow. And so after, you know, um, uh, this prayer from verses 5 to 12, that Jehoshaphat, he prays, uh, then the Bible says that all stood before the Lord. Amen. The little ones, the wives, the children, they stood before the Lord. I believe they stood before the Lord in silence. They 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 prayed. They 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 proclaimed a fast. They they're asking him for help. And now they stand before him silent, listening to what God's going to say to them. Okay. Uh prayer, prayer is 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 communication. It's a two-way communication. We speak to God, he'll speak to us. Amen. We need to listen after we pray that he may give us. You know, the directions, uh, the directives that we need in order to go forward. So they they stood, they stood in faith and they stood waiting and they stood expecting to hear from God. How often do we pray? And, you know, and, and we really don't believe God's going to answer. But they stood there and they and they were waiting until God answered them. All right. They stood before the Lord. Look at verse 14. Look what happens. I said, I said. Fasting be set the tone. I believe set, you know, begin to set things in order. All right. And so they fast, they pray, and then uh, there is a prophetic utterance that takes place. Uh, uh, a prophetic utterance. The Lord responds through a prophetic utterance. And so, uh, verse thirteen. Now all Judah, with the little ones, their wives and their children, so before the Lord. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you. Hey, one thing about body ministry, hey, we work together, amen. And that no one, no one has it all that we, we're inter, interdependent of each other and not independent of each other. And so as, they, as, as the prayer went up, they stood still waiting to hear from God. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon uh, Zechariah 
and the Bible says that God gave him a, a prophetic word. Praise God. Look at verse, uh, thus to the Lord to you. Look at this. Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. The word comes, don't be afraid. Hey, was there was there a reason to be afraid? It sure yeah. was. A great multitude was coming against them. Okay. And so in the midst of that environment, you know, the prophetic word comes. And that's why it's important that we have an ear to hear what God's saying. That's why it's important that we allow, you know, prophetic, prophetic utterances to come into our assembly, into our midst, because God will give us a word. Amen. Uh, he will not leave us helpless. Uh, he'll he'll give us, he'll provide a word for us. And the word is, do not be afraid nor dismayed, okay? Probably probably they, they were both. They were afraid and they were dismayed. And the prophet says, don't be afraid nor be dismayed. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. You know, prophetic words, it's not, it's not the length of the word, it's the strength of the word. Sometimes, you know, we think we got to give this long prophetic, you know, word and so forth. No, just give what God said. All right. It's very simple. Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God. Wow. The battle is not yours, but God's. God's. Hallelujah. And so and so we need to make sure that also there is a sense of being obedient to the word that God releases. If we want to get the results that God uh, has for us, then we must be we have to be attentive to what the spirit of God is saying. And then we must be obedient to it. Now look in verse, in verse, um, verse, verse 16, all right? It says, tomorrow go down with them. Wow. See, first, now, now it says the battle's not yours. So maybe they thought, well, look, we can just pack up and go home and, you know, chill <laughs> and not do anything because, hey, the battle ain't mine. So I ain't got to show up, you know? No, look, look at the instructions. He says, he says, 16, tomorrow, Go down against them. They will surely come up from the ascent of Ziz. And so, hey, uh, the prophet is also, you know, flowing, you know, uh, in the word of knowledge. Amen. You know, he has he has knowledge about the enemy and what they're going to do. All right. You will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jericho. Look at this. You will not need to fight in this battle. So some folk would say, well, why I got to go down there then? If I ain't got to fight, you know, <laughs> what's the purpose of me going, you know? And so, uh, and so look what it says. It says, position yourselves, position yourselves, glory to God. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And so God responds to a prophetic utterance, all right? He gives information about where the, the, the enemy is coming. And he says, tomorrow I want you to go down. All right. So God wanted God wanted them to go to the battlefield. OK, even though the battle was the Lord's, he was going to use their participation. Amen. He was going to use their involvement. He says, go position yourselves and look at this and stand still. What an act of faith. What an act of trust that you have this great multitude coming towards them. And, 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 and the word is, I want you to stand still, position yourself and stand still, just stand still. That had to be, that, that was an act of faith and trusting <sighs> God, that God was going to do something, amen. Now, many of us would have been nervous and you know, we'd have, you know, <laughs> we'd have been like, uh, like Peter, you know, and cut the servant's ear off, you know, you know, you know, be, you know uh, be aggressive, you know, uh, self-preservation. But he said, look, position yourself. Then he says, stand still, stand still. And I like what it says. And it said, and it says, and see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> salvation of the Lord. In other words, they would witness what God would do and have a personal testimony of what God had done. Stand still and see the salvation. Hey, there was such an assurance that God was going to deliver, de deliver them and God was going to, you know, win this battle for them that the instructions were, I need you to stand still 
I want you to uh, position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. And so, um, uh, so verse, uh, verse, uh, yeah, the latter part of that verse. Uh, <clears throat> See the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. The promise of the Lord's presence with them. And so look at this. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Wow. So Jehoshaphat bowed his head at, with his face to the ground. God's people wouldn't have, would not have to take a weapon for this battle. They won the battle on their faces before the Lord. They won the battle on their faces before the Lord. They worship. They, they, uh, they worship the Lord. You know, it was interesting because. Uh, they they bow down and they worship. You know when I was when I was you know going over this this afternoon, I was playing some music and uh, there was a, a song by Walter Hawkins I was listening to, you know, around about this this juncture, and it says, "Don't wait till the battle's over. Shout now, Hallelujah, Hallelujah." Mm, yeah. Hey, they immediately after they got the prophetic word. He bowed his head and he worshiped. In other words, they really believed that God was going to bring victory and deliverance. Amen. Uh, and it, it was appropriate for them to worship. It was right for them to worship, for they believed uh, they believed that God was going to bring victory. All right. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So look at this. Look at this. So they rose up. Look at this. Early. Early. They rose up early in the morning. You know, uh, you know, you know, the Bible's the prophetic word was, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. And it's interesting because at that point, even when they're worshiping the Lord, you know, um, they weren't delivered, but they were sure they would be delivered. Their enemies were still alive, but they were confident that they would all be they'd all be destroyed. Okay. They worshiped in faith before they walked into everything that God had given unto them. They demonstrated their faith and trust in God that somehow, they didn't know how, our eyes, our eyes are on you. We don't know how you're gonna do it. We don't know when you're gonna do it. But what we do know is you're gonna do it. And we have the assurance that the Lord is with us. So they rose up early in the morning. They were so sure that they were going to, that this battle was gonna be won, that they rose early in the morning. They couldn't wait until morning came. They got up early. They went. They went to the battlefield. They had that much confidence and that trust in God. Those who were fearful, who were dismayed, come on, of this great multitude, now the whole disposition, the whole attitude changed because as they sought the Lord, proclaimed the fast, as they prayed, as the prophetic word came, it, it brought encouragement to discouragement. It brought faith with, where, there was, was, where there was fear. Amen. They brought expectation you know, that God was going to do something. And so they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekea. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. All right? Number one, you got to believe in him. Two, he said, and you shall be, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. Believe that prophetic word. Amen. Uh, God spoke to us, you know, prophetically. He gave us a word. You know, if you believe the prophetic word, you will, you will, you will prosper. 
And then he goes on in verse 20. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Look at this. The praisers went out before the army. Hey, they he consulted, get the right people out there because I bet you some people on that worship team said, I don't want to go. Yeah. Some folk on that worship team said, look, don't choose me. You know, you mean I got to go out there in front of the army? I, hey, I'll do it behind them, but you're telling me to go out in front of the army? Hey, I'll sit this one out. I got laryngitis. I, I, I just lost my voice. I can't, I can't sing. You know, and so it was interesting that he places the worship team in before the army. So in other words, this also lets us know they were expecting a battle because if they weren't expecting a battle, there'd be no need to bring an army, okay? And so, and so by virtue of the expectation that there was gonna be a battle, all, all, they, all they really knew was they were gonna win, but they didn't know how they were gonna win. They didn't know what God, was, what God was gonna do to bring about the victory, but they were sure of victory. And so he says, put the worshipers in front of the army, those that would praise the beauty of holiness. Look, ah, hallelujah. The praise of beauty of holiness, the, the separateness of God, that God is, is, there's nothing and no one near him, like him, liken unto him. You know, the separateness, how he's so, he's so separate from everybody else. He's so different from anybody else. He's not a man. Come on, he's God, mm -hmm. and he's all together lovely. Praising for the beauty of his holiness, praising for the beauty of his separateness, praising because he is God all by himself. And so, and so, uh, as they went out before the army, they went out before the army. It took it took great faith for these for these worshipers to go and sing praise before the army because if there was if there was a I mean, you know, if, if there was going to be a fight, they would have been the first, first ones to be killed, the first ones to be destroyed. So it shows great confidence and faith that they had uh, 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 in God, almost like, almost like Esther. Hey, if I perish, I perish. Amen. If I'm going to see the king, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be, you know, uh, uh, stopped, you know, by the circumstances. What's going to motivate me and what's going to compel me is that prophetic word. And, you know, and Jehoshaphat reminds them, believe in God. Believe what God said. Believe who God is. You know, as he, as he prayed, are you not our God? You know, aren't, aren't you sovereign? Don't you have power over all the nations and over all, and all kingdoms? Believe who I am and then believe my, the prophetic word that I released to my prophet. Believe you'll be established uh, in, in God. Believe in the prophetic word, and you will prosper. All right, and so and praise the Lord for His mercy endures forever. Uh, just praise Him because the steadfast mm -hmm. love of the Lord, Lord never ceases. His love, His love endures. His faithful, His faithful love endures yes. for endures forever. Amen. In verse twenty-two, it says, "And now, when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, sing and." Sing and to praise the Lord for me. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. God never told them how he was going to do it. He just told them, I'm going to do it. So they had complete trust in him. I don't even, I don't even believe that they, you know, when they begin to worship and when they begin to sing, you know, uh, that thing, that thing, uh, touch God's heart, that there would be such people of faith, amen, faith pleases God, without faith it's impossible to please him, that they please him, that God's strategy now was kick, kick, kicked in, and that God was going to fight this, he said, look, position yourself, stand still and see, because they didn't know how God was going to deliver, and God said, I want you to stand still and see how I'm going to deliver you, how I'm going to bring you out, praise God, hallelujah, and so and so now, when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, and, and sing and to praise, that the Lord set ambushes. They weren't privy 
of the strategy that God was going to use. God didn't tell them how they were going to do it. Amen. And oftentimes, God won't tell us how he's going to do it. What he wants out of us is obedient to his word and to exercise our faith in him. And we do that, we'll walk into the promises of God. Amen. And so it says, uh, he sent ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped destroy one another. God sent confusion in the camp. They started killing each other. Hey, they didn't have to lift up uh, a weapon. They won the battle on their faces before the Lord. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude and there were the, their dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves and more themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Hallelujah. God brought them into a wealthy place. God enlarged them. Amen. God used, God used that to be a blessing uh, for his people. For three days, they took up uh, the spoil because it was so much. Do you know what? Hey, it wasn't so much about the three days. For me, it was about the fourth day because they, they, they gave the glory to who the glory belonged to. They gave the glory to God, amen. It's, it's the fourth day. What we do, or what we don't do on the fourth day, Many of us would take the spoils, taking the spoil, plundered, uh, plundered the, 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 uh, the enemy, and went on about our business. Amen. Hey, the Bible says that they were, they were uh, uh, 10 lepers, and, uh, and God healed all 10 of them. Only one came back to give thanks. Amen. And you know what? We need to recognize that, hey, God says, first of all, the battle is not yours. So you really can't rejoice in this victory. You got to give me the glory because if it wasn't for me, amen, you would not win this battle. It's the fourth day. It's the fourth day that, that, that we need to look forward to. And the Bible says on verse 26, and on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Barakah. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of that place was called the valley of Barakah until this day. Amen. It's when we come back and give God praise. When we come back and bless the Lord, when we come back to give him the glory that's due unto his name. When we come back to honor him. When we come back to say, Lord, thank you for the victory. Thank you for the battle. Every battle that he brought us to, every victory that we've won, everything that we've triumphed in, it was never because of us. It's always because of God. As, and they could continue to say, praise the Lord. Amen for his mercy endureth forever. And we'll have that testimony. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. On the fourth day, they came back and they turned that valley into a valley of blessing. Amen. I want you to know today that some of you are in a valley right now, but God can turn that valley into a place of blessing. You don't have to be on the mountaintop to praise God. You don't have to be you know, on the mountain to give God glory. But even in the midst of in the middle of your valley, that can be a place of blessing where you can worship and praise God because he's not only God of the mountains, but he's God of the valley. Amen. He promised to be with us. Amen. Position yourself, stand still, and see how I'm going to work in this situation, how I'm going to work this thing out for your good, but for my glory. And so they came back appropriately to bless the Lord. Amen. Don't get so caught up in the blessings that we forget we forget the blesser. Amen. Don't get so caught up in the gifts that we forget, forget the giver of the gifts. Amen. He is to be praised. He is to be adored. Amen. And the Bible says, look, and the fear of God, verse 29, was on all the kingdoms of these countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel, then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest all, all around. Amen. The fear of God, not the fear of Jehoshaphat. 
Jehoshaphat was a great king and Jehoshaphat, you know, was the head of the army, but it wasn't about Jehoshaphat. It was the fear of God that was spread throughout all the kingdoms. And look at this, and, and, and to the extent that God gave them rest. The Bible says he will make our enemies our footstool. Praise God, hallelujah. He will be exalted in all the earth. If we learn how to position ourselves, stand still and see the Lord. I believe it all, it all began when he proclaimed a fast and things just began to fall right into line. Amen. One thing after another. When, if you want God to do something extraordinary in your life, you got to seek him in an extraordinary way. I'm telling you, prayer and fasting is not in vain. When you say, God, I'm totally dependent upon you and I need you. I'm going to feed upon you. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to seek you. My eyes will be on you. Amen. We can get through this thing in the days that come because God is faithful and God will keep us. If we position ourselves, stand still, pray and fast. Amen. We will see God do something in our lives extraordinary because you decided to seek God in an extraordinary way. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I am finished. Praise God. Wow. Praise God. That was very encouraging. Oh, yes, this was. Very Yes, very encouragement. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. God praise for how He kept you. Yes, Lord. How He fed you. I said, how He fed you. Oh my, we can feast on Him. Amen. Feasting on the bread of life. Feasting on the goodness of God. Feasting on the bread of life. Feasting on the goodness of God. Feasting on the Mercy, the kindness of God. Yes. Yes. You know who he yes. is. I'm telling yes. you, he's a banquet yes. all by himself. Yes. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Glory. Thank you. Glory. 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 Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 suffering, I say praise God. Because Amen. Because suffering yes. can't be compared to the glory that God, hey, if you're God. suffering, Amen. Right. Amen. I said, Amen. if you're suffering, Amen. look for glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. And the Hallelujah. glory Hallelujah. always outweigh the suffering. The, the suffering. glory yes. will always be greater yes. than the yes. suffering. Yes. 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 So if you're really yes. going through something, don't wait till the battle's over. Shout that. Oh, Hallelujah. now. Oh, yes. Now. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Shout yes. down yes. on your faith and yes. worship God Lord. because yes. what is about Hallelujah. to come will yes. exceed, Amen. transcend all yes. that you're going through. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. I'm Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Oh, hallelujah. You but nobody you like it. Come on, somebody ought to have to you with God. Nobody like it. Yeah. What God has done awesome. in your life. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Come on, you've been saved. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Yes, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 He says, yes. trust me with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. He says, in all thy ways, acknowledge me. Just as Jehovah said, acknowledge God. He said, acknowledge me. He says, acknowledge me. And he says, he will direct your path. But he said, to trust in me, lean not to your own understanding. But with your situations, circumstances, what's going on. But God says, when you Thank just you, acknowledge Thank it, you, Lord. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Acknowledge who he is as Jehovah. Thank you, Jesus. And he says, he will yes. direct your path for trust yes. in him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
I've never <laughs> let you down yet. I've never let you down yet. Never. <laughs> never will. Yeah. Hallelujah. Never, never will. will. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Ah, shut up, Baba. I will trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mama said, Oh, 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 and I, I heard the Lord just said, Do you believe? Mm. <laughs> Do you believe? Oh, yes. I, I believe. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. yes ma'am. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, ma'am. Oh, it takes me through. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank mm. you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Ooh. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, Jesus. I heard yeah. the Lord say the instructions are imperative for many mm-hmm. of you. See, you wait, you look, you see, but you refuse to stand still. So I heard the Lord say mm. that the instructions are imperative. So if He tells you to stand still, mm. resist the temptation to move, mm. stand still. Amen. Resistance Amen. is fruit time. Amen. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I hear the Lord saying, make your face like flint. Mm-hmm. Make yes. your face like flint, no matter how daunting it looks. Set your face like flint. Yes. The opposition may come, but I'm the breaker, says the Lord. Yes. Yes. Mm. I will break every foe. I will break every chain. Mm. Yeah. I will break every ops, every opposition before you. I've cleared the way, says mm. the Lord. So set your face like flint and stand mm. on victory ground. Mm-hmm. Victory ground, mm. I give you. I've caused you to triumph. Mm. You are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer. Thank you. Way, says the Lord. Mm. Mm. Amen. Oh, amen. 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 Oh, amen. 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 Yeah, oh, glory, glory, yeah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Yes. Oh, man, thank, thank you. you. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 I stand in this place. Amen. 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 That place and fire. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Promises I've made. Hallelujah. He said, embrace him. Embrace the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, yeah. I heard I heard the Lord say during the fast, he said, I'm going to release a new fire to the body. And the new fire will come through the fasting and praying and seeking my face. He said, now is the time to seek my face that you may see me more clearly. And the fasting and the praying, you will see my face more clearly Amen. with a greater Amen. understanding. I'm going to pour out my fire yes. on the people. It's like we're, we're getting ready to get a new bath. It's like yes. God is washing us clean again. Amen. Not that we're dirty, but he's re-washing us, rededicating us through this fast. Yes. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Refreshing in the fire that's coming, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Tomorrow we, we move the goalpost a little further, amen. So it's not going to be a, a chip shot, amen. Can't hear, you. can't hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. I said tomorrow we're move, moving the goalpost a little further, amen. And so uh, uh, <laughs> until 6 p.m., amen. Get you ready for next week. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, all things through Christ. Amen. Amen. Declare. Help Do you Holy believe? The strength. He is our strength. Amen. That's what Jesus said to um, to Martha. Believe mm -hmm. thou this. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Our strength. Mm. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ignis Balanli, are you on? Are you tired yes. of the baby? Yes, she did. Amen. Could you close out in prayer, please? Nothing. Thank you. Heavenly Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for this night. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the manifestation yes, of God. God amongst us tonight. We yes. Thank you, so we know that you are with us. And we've heard from you, O oh God. Yes. We pray that everything that we've heard today, Lord, let it germinate great fruits within us. Mm -hmm. share and deposit into others oh god may we be able to apply what we've learned today oh god and get deeper in prayer and get deeper in, in intimacy with you oh god and and sharpen our ears to be sensitive to your voice oh god as yes, we drown god. out every other distractions in our lives oh lord we pray that as we go forth into this week oh guys we'll press forward in in um in seeking thy face, O oh Lord, we pray for strength, we pray for wisdom, we pray for guidance, we pray for your protection over every single one of us, O oh God. Lord, we use this opportunity to pray for those who are in need of your healing. We ask, mm -hmm. O oh God, that you will lay your hands upon them. We touch and agree, O oh God, and believe in your power, O oh God, that you are a miracle working God, that you will heal them, O oh Lord, yes, and that Lord, great testimonies that yes, result as a result of our prayers oh god lord we give you all the praise for we know that you are able oh god it's never a question of your ability but lord we ask oh god that you be willing oh god oh. that you will help our unbelief oh god mm -hmm. and that your name alone be glorified in jesus name amen 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 amen, amen. 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 amen.